Greetings, my menopausal sisters. <laughs> Imagine that, all of us as sisters belonging to one great big family. <laughs> well, in reality, we aren't all from the same family. And that means we do not all have the same familial risk factors. So today we'll talk about that. And since this video is part of our big unit on epithelial ovarian cancer, we're going to talk about it specifically in the context of epithelial ovarian cancer. This is video number 425. It's the 13th video in the epithelial ovarian cancer unit, and it's the fifth video on risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer. Now, if you have my book, and I sincerely hope you do, <laughs> you'll find this material in chapter 32, all of which is on epithelial ovarian cancer. And you already know that you'll get more detail here than you do in the book. Okay, so now, why do you think you need to bother watching a video on family history as a risk factor? for epithelial ovarian cancer? Well, it's because different aspects of your family history have different impacts on your disease risks. Some family members have an effect on your risk for epithelial ovarian cancer. Others do not. You have to know which ones matter. And the family members who impact your risk of this particular disease may or may not impact your risk for other diseases. You absolutely must be specific. So let's delve into this analysis of which family members matter for epithelial ovarian cancer. In presenting these risk factors for epithelial ovarian cancer, you've seen that I created different categories of risk factors. Here's our big risk factor chart. Notice that the green section at the top is the category of hereditary risk factors, while all the factors below it are non-hereditary risk factors. And notice that family history is one of the non-hereditary risk factors. It's a third of the way down the chart in lavender. One of the things I find very bothersome and yet so common is a merging of the hereditary and family categories. They are not the same. They do not belong together. Hereditary risk factors consist of a genetic mutation that you inherit at birth. A non-hereditary risk factor is one that does not involve a genetic mutation. So the category of family history as a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer consists of family members who have had ovarian cancer without a genetic mutation as the basis for it. However, and this is a great big however, up to half of women with a genetic mutation have no family history of any kind of epithelial ovarian cancer. So you could have a mutation but have no family history for epithelial ovarian cancer. In other words, you could be the first person in your family with epithelial ovarian cancer even though other family members carry a genetic mutation for it. Unfortunately though, it is very difficult to find information on family history as a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer without the intermingling of genetic mutations for epithelial ovarian cancer. The literature just flips back and forth between the two, sometimes even in the same sentence. This is the case with many things in medicine. In the unit on osteoporosis, you discovered the same problem with failure to distinguish between bone quantity and bone quality. In the unit on heart attack, you saw it with failure to distinguish symptoms of a heart attack in a man from those in a woman. In the unit on Alzheimer's disease, 
you saw it with interchangeable use of the terms cognitive decline and Alzheimer's, even though they are two very different entities. Specificity with all things in medicine is so, so important. Yet, it is very common for medical literature, doctors, and patients to merge dissimilar things. And all that does is create misinformation and confusion. So our category of risk factors for today has to do with your family members, but we are not talking about any epithelial ovarian cancers that are due to a genetic mutation. Do not extrapolate. Now, whenever you address family history as a risk factor for a disease, you must designate two things. First, which side of the family, maternal or paternal or both, contributes to your risk? And second, which degree of family relationship, first degree, second degree, or beyond, contributes to your risk? This is so, so important. You need to be really secure in your knowledge about this, and you mustn't confuse these parameters for one disease with those for another. You know, when it comes to things like this, things that are so critical, I like to give you a quiz question to show you what you do or do not know. Most of the time it wakes you up to what you don't know. So see if you can answer this quiz question. Which of the following is true regarding the effect of your family history on your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer? A. All your relatives affect your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer. B. Only your maternal relatives affect your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer. C. Only your paternal relatives affect your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer. D. Only your first degree relatives affect your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer. E. Only your second degree relatives affect your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer. F. Only your first degree maternal relatives affect your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer. G. Only your first degree paternal relatives affect your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer. H. Your first and second degree maternal and paternal relatives affect your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer. So what's your final answer? Are you feeling absolutely certain? Are you wonder, or are you wondering if you're confusing the details of family history for epithelial ovarian cancer with those of other diseases? You see what I mean? This is why you have to know this cold and be specific. So here's the quiz question again with the answer in bold. So now you know that your first and second degree maternal and paternal relatives affect your risk for epithelial ovarian cancer. And I have modified my t-shirt to reflect this. See? <laughs> the most common mistake is confusing the relatives that matter for breast cancer with the ones that matter for epithelial ovarian cancer. If you've been watching my videos in order, you'll recall a couple of instances in the breast cancer unit when I told you that there is a difference between the two. Here's a chart of the risk factors for breast cancer. Look at the lavender row. There you see that the relatives affecting your risk of breast cancer are only your first degree maternal relatives that have had either breast cancer, or epithelial ovarian cancer. They include your mother, your sister, and your daughter only. But it is not the same for epithelial ovarian cancer. For epithelial ovarian cancer, you take it one step farther for both parameters, side of the family and degree of relationship. So instead of just maternal relatives, it's both maternal and paternal relatives.
And instead of just first degree relatives, it's both first and second degree relatives. And with epithelial ovarian cancer, the family history risk factor category only assesses relatives with epithelial ovarian cancer rather than both epithelial ovarian cancer and breast cancer. Obviously, this means that only the females in the family will contribute to risk of epithelial ovarian cancer. Males don't have ovaries, cancerous or otherwise. So the parameters of family history for epithelial ovarian cancer include first and second degree, maternal and paternal, female relatives only, with a history of epithelial ovarian cancer only. So that's why I'm wearing this t-shirt that I've modified for purposes of this video. <laughs> Here's the familiar family tree you've seen many, many times. There's you here, down here waving. <laughs> On this side, you have your maternal relatives. On this side, you have your paternal relatives. Your first degree relatives are all these that are connected to you directly by a line with no other individuals between the two of you. So, your first degree relatives would include all of these people right here. So what you've got now here, your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, and your children, okay? All of these people affect your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer. Now, your second degree relatives are all these that are not connected to you through your mom and your dad. So, they include your two grandmothers and two grandfathers and all your aunts and uncles. So, that's gonna include this group of people over here. These are second degree. Oh, and on the other side, we have another group of the same folks from the other side of the family. So there's your second degree relatives. So they include both your maternal and paternal relatives, meaning both the left and right sides of the family tree. But they don't include anyone beyond the second degree. Now, all these folks up here, they, are your third degree relatives. Put this up here, there. So they are third degree. So that means we can actually remove all the third degree relatives <laughs> because they don't count. So we can take all of them off the board they are not pertinent to your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer at all. We don't mean any disrespect. It's just that they don't contribute to your risk. So we're going to remove them. And the, risk, the people who put you at risk don't include any of the males because males don't have ovaries. So we can remove all the males just because they're male. We're getting all the men off our board. <laughs> you don't have to get them out of your life, but we're taking them off the board. So you've reduced this to a lot fewer relatives. You can see the number of relatives that affect your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer is greater than the number that affects your risk of breast cancer. But wait a minute. Take Another look at the chart of risk factors that pertain to family history. Here it is in isolation. Notice that the specific risk factors on the list only pertain to first degree relatives. The two parameters listed are one first degree relative with ovarian cancer or two or more first degree relatives with ovarian cancer. But why do you suppose that only first-degree relatives are listed? There's nothing stated about second-degree relatives at all. Well, that, my dears, 
is due to the paucity of research available to verify the degree of risk imposed by second degree relatives. Now this may be due to a number of limitations. I mean, small family size limits the number of relative scientists can even study. Lack of family knowledge of their relatives' diseases creates missing data. And inaccurate medical histories or confusion between one cancer and another makes it difficult to rely on the information. I mean, face it, family members don't always divulge their personal medical situations to their families. How much do you know about your grandparents' medical histories with certainty? Most people have only a vague idea of which diseases their grandparents or aunts had. These epithelial ovarian cancers in family members that increase your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer only do so to a very small degree. They increase your risk by 5% over the already very low average risk of 1.4%. This means that second degree relatives increase your risk to an even lower extent than that. And it is so low that we don't even have statistics for it. Notice also that this category of family history as a risk factor only lists ovarian cancer. It says nothing about gastrointestinal uterine, brain, or skin cancers associated with the hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer syndrome we discussed in video number 423. Once again, this is because of the huge distinction between cancers that are due to a genetic mutation and those that are not. The only non-genetic family history that increases your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer is epithelial ovarian cancers. So the summary for family history as a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer is as follows. Family history of non-genetic epithelial ovarian cancers increases your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer by 5% if you have one first degree relative with ovarian cancer or two or more first degree relatives with ovarian cancer. Second degree relatives increase your risk of epithelial ovarian cancer to an extent too low to calculate. Both maternal and paternal female relatives have an effect on your risk. And that wraps up family history as a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer. With each additional video, you just keep getting closer and closer to a full understanding of this disease. So next week, we will surge ahead to a discussion on your personal profile as a risk factor for epithelial ovarian cancer. You know you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Stories, TikTok. You know you can subscribe to my channel and my newsletter right here and now. You know I would love to have a consultation with you, which you can schedule at menopausetaylor.me. And you know that I'll be back in a week to teach you some more life-saving information. <laughs> Bye for now! <laughs>